Broadcasting to the world from South Jersey, this is Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and J.J. Golick. A weekly podcast with different topics every week. The views and opinions on this show are entirely those of the hosts, guests, and callers. And do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of any businesses or organizations mentioned during the show. And now, it's Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and J.J. Golick. Yo, yo, what is going on? It is Anything Goes. Phil Rossi alongside my man, J.J. Golick. J.J., what is up? What's up, Phil? You like my new uh, new addition to the show? I like it. It's it's a new toy. It's a new toy, all right. You got that right. I knew you were going to do it again. I had a feeling. Why not? This, we got it. Let's use it. This is the perfect segue into a <laughs> dreary depression of a topic today. We're going to start it off... And we're going to talk about the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. We'll talk about the potential side effects. But I think more importantly, we, w- we want to kind of get into, uh, you know, will you take it or? No. Okay. Nope. 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 Too early. Tell me why. It's because it's too early? It, it's way too early. Look at any other vaccine, how long it's taken. It's taken years right. to come out with a vaccine. And now you think you're going to do one in a couple months? No. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, with Operation Warp Speed, they're obviously trying to get it done because I feel like the quicker they get a vaccine, the more people take it, they feel like, okay, we'll get everybody vaccinated, we'll feel good about it. Uh, you know, a lot of, like, theater of the mind, we'll feel good, and then we'll just, we'll get back to life. We'll just start living It doesn't again. work that way. But I'm not, I don't, I'm not taking it. I just, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm not against vaccines. I just it's think... too new. Yeah, and I, and I also think with a virus that has over a 99.5% survival rate. Yeah. I, I I don't want to be first in line. I mean, if you're elderly, if you're sick, I can understand it. But, you know, again, if, I think if you're young and you're strong and you feel good, right? And you know if you feel good. You know you get up in the morning and you feel energized and you feel positive and you're feeling good. You know, I, I don't I don't know. I just don't, I, I don't see a need to go get, you know, stuck in the arm two times for the, for the vaccine. No. And I, I did see an article not too long ago that was saying that uh, getting the vaccine will actually like hurt. It'll hurt to get either the first or second shot. And it's kind of like the flu where they actually give you a portion of the disease itself. And you might have to take a day or two off from work because you're going to feel sick. And, you know, I don't I don't know. I mean, there it's are some people. Me. Yeah, there are some people that are they can't wait. They're in line. They're like all jazzed up to get it. I was it. watching it on the news this afternoon at lunch. I'm sitting there watching it on the TV, the, the first lady in New Jersey to get it. And I'm like. Yeah, and it's cool. Why do we have a whole press release for this? She's going to feel like shit the next day. Yeah, and it's, again... Are we going to get a footage of her throwing up or something? Yeah. I mean, my God. <laughs> as long as as long as long they don't ever mandate it and we can choose whether we want to get it or not, I'm good with that. If you want to get it, it makes you feel better and it makes you feel safe, then that's cool. Then, then, then do it. Go for it. But, you know, for me personally, I, I'm not getting it. I know, um, you know, my fiance is not getting it. But then there are other people in our families that... I feel like they're like, ooh, they're waiting. Yeah. They're, like, they're, they're ready. Like, they're like in line. It's like, okay. You know, and if you're not sick, so I feel like the thing we can ask is, why would you be getting it? Right? So we're, we're personally not getting it. We're not getting it. I'm not getting it because, I, like, like we said, it, we think it's too fast. Yep. It's way too fast. Uh, we don't really know the side effects. And honestly, you might not know the side effects for 10 years. Right. I, I mean, this person that got it first could go have a kid and it has three heads. <laughs> I mean, you you don't know. No, you, no, you don't know, and you know, you gotta know you're not going to know till something happens, right? And now it's you know it, it's kind of odd to me in a way because I feel like they're making it like it's like exciting, like like whether you believe in it or you don't believe in it, you want to get it or you don't want to get it, like like you're saying with the press, like why why is it so like hyped up? Yeah, yay! Right, you're, it's like you're getting stuck in the arm. Congratulations. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're like celebrating. Happy like, New Year. Yeah, and the thing is, if you get it, it's not if you get it, no more masks, no more social distancing, everything opens up. No. So, you know, and then you also have the other side of the coin, which is the people that don't get it versus the people that do get it. And it's like, if you get it, are you safe? Or, But what happens if you get it and, then, oh, you talk to somebody who doesn't have it, do they get it? Like, it's all this, you know, and I don't think anybody really knows. And again, vaccines, spoiler alert, they're not 100% effective. No, they're not. They don't work for everybody. I know people have gotten vaccines that have still gotten sick. Right. It same happens. Th- same thing with the flu shot. You get the flu shot, and a lot of people still, because there's different strands of the flu. There's different strands of, uh, you know, COVID. So there's a lot of different things to unpack. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly of the numbers of how many people are for it, how many people are against it. 
And, you know, honestly, if you're one of the first couple thousand people, the first whatever to take it, you technically are, you know, in, in a guinea pig status. Yeah. And you know what? I know they test things behind the scenes, but they didn't have a lot of time to test it either. That's the thing. That was one thing my girlfriend brought up who is going into the healthcare field. She goes, well, they have to test it behind the scenes. I said, yeah, but look how quickly they made this thing. How much right. real testing went into this? The first people that are going out to get this stupid thing are they're guinea pigs. That's it. There's right. no way around it because nobody knows what's going to happen. Who knows? Maybe it's not even going to work. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, it, it could be you know more of a placebo effect where you get it, and you. And that's the thing. Like you might personally feel more protected. You know, it's the same thing with the mask and the social distancing. It 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 is theater of the mind where it makes you feel better, and that's okay. Like if if that it's more of a mental thing though than it is technically working it's like okay let's keep our distance let's wear the mask we had the vaccine so it's all these uh you know things like you're playing in your mind that makes you feel better but the reality is we don't really know if it works i mean at first the mask didn't work then the mask is good then social distancing like why is it six feet like the vaccine is here now is that because i kind of have two thoughts on this is where like if everybody got the vaccine or the people that wanted it got it and we can get back to normal life I'm good, right? Because I'm not getting it anyway. But if half the people want to get it and that gets us back to being able to go out, taking the mask off, sporting events, concerts, then that's cool. Let's get the uh, let's get this shit moving here. Right. But it's it's not going to be like that. And you also have to look at, you know, okay, the vaccine's here, but here we have our lovely governor that's going around and picking and choosing which establishments he wants to shut down for 30 days, 45 days, 90 days. Right. And he's picking and choosing which ones he wants to go to because they're all doing the same damn thing for the most part. They're all doing the same thing, the same bar atmosphere. It, it's all the same. But he's picking and choosing which ones he wants to go to. And I know the running joke is, you know, when you, especially when you're getting to the end of the night, oh, you better close the blinds. Murphy's going to be peeking in. But it's, it's true. Because in, here in New Jersey, we have the uh, 10 p.m. curfew. Yeah, 10 p.m. What the hell? Uh, what is it? Mi- mysteriously come out? No like, no gathering at the bars, JJ. No mm. gather. Oh, listen, mm-hmm. li- it, it, it's depressing because I've been DJing, you know, the past two weeks at a bar and people want to get up and dance and have a good time. And you have to look like a jack and either intentionally slow down the music or tell them you got to sit down. Right. It's and like, it it's kills like, it. It kills like, everything. It's like if the fun meter gets a little bit too high. You, you, you got to drop it because people are like, you know, because it's obviously it's like a natural instinct to, oh, wow, the song's really good. You want to get up and dance. And, and then you have to, you have to kind of. It makes you look bad. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And it's, it's depressing because I feel like if, if these people want to get up and they want to dance, let them at their own risk. Go for it. You have the signs. You can't make anybody do anything. That's, that's the reality of the situation. I can't make you put a mask on. I can't make you sit down in the chair and not get up and dance. If you're going to get up and, you know, frolic around the dining room, you're going to do it. Right, exactly. I, this, I was also thinking about this the other day, too, and it all kind of falls in line with the vaccine and the mask and stuff, is that, um, you know, you'll talk to some people and they'll have the perspective of, we're doing this to protect you, right? We're doing it Are to, you? to keep you healthy. Uh, on, on the flip side of that, I've had my own issues with waiting literally months to get unemployment with jobs that don't have the resources to do a background check. So it takes you two months longer to get hired. Once you get the job, the payroll department's at home, they're only working part-time hours. So it's taking you triple the time to get all your money. So while we're worried about uh, health, which is which is understandable, what about the businesses that you shut down that now have no livelihood? What about the people who need the unemployment that are not getting it? What about the people that have been working for a month, but the payroll department is not there or something's wrong with the ADP payroll and you're not getting it, and those people can pay their mortgage or their rent or their car payment or buy food or and support their care. kids? They, they don't care. Your bill collectors don't care. See, that's the thing. So you, you kind of have to have a, a, a juggling act here, and it can't just all be like health, 100%. And there's no balance. And then on the other side, nobody's getting paid. No businesses are open. The economy's completely shut down. Because I think it's it's really odd the way people think about health, health, keeping you healthy, vaccine, gotta stay healthy, can't can't get sick, can't get sick. But then on the other hand, and that's not even including all of the 
you know, uh, depression and anxiety on top of all the other things we just mentioned uh, over here. I think it's really destructive to, you know, just people in general. And, you know, again, you got to have a balance. You, I understand the health thing, and but I also get nobody gives a, shit, a lot of people, especially nope. politicians, about the, you know, and it's not just the economy. Like, people have this They're weird— They're still getting paid. Yeah, they have this weird—like, people in general have this weird, like, who cares about your business? But that's how people make money. You know, and I feel like the people that say that are the ones that are not truly affected or losing money or lost their job or taking a pay cut because of, the you know, COVID. Yeah, and you have to look at it this way. Like I said, that they're still getting paid, the politicians. So they don't care. They don't really – it doesn't affect them. So they're not going to care. And then you have these other businesses that, you know, they're doing what they can. But, again, you can't force anybody. You know, there's so many laws. You can't put your hands on people. You can't escort them out. You can't do this. You can't do that. But that you want to enforce – they can't get up and dance. You can't do this. You can't do that. But then you can't reinforce it. You know well, what I mean? That's what I mean. And, and what the, do you want me to do? Hire a freaking security guard? I don't got that kind of money. Right. And on a, on a larger scale of stuff, it's, you know, we're, we're mandating masks. We're mandating social distancing. We're mandating cleaning, which is fine. But how come we're not mandating everybody who has been trying to collect unemployment? How come it's not mandated automatically goes into your bank account? Like you're not mandating that. You're not mandating that when you close restaurants and you kill the wait staff and kill the owner, that those people are not getting money. That you're Like that's not mandated, right? Nope. That stuff is, you got to figure it out. You're on your own. But You well, chose to go into business. Well, my business was doing just fine before you came and screwed it up. Right. Now, my thing is if you want to close the business or the restaurant or, or whatever it is, and you're you're like literally coming to my business and paying me in cash or a check every month or every week for what I'm missing. Then when you get your shit figured out and you got COVID under control, then we'll open back up. But it's you close and then oh you got to apply for a grant or apply for a PPE loan or oh you don't you don't you're not qualified for that so you don't get it. So there's definitely this double standard going on. Well, then I I also know uh, another thing that's in the government's pocket is you know, college, all these universities. And I know one of my friends who decided to live off of campus for the next semester. Um, they're trying to make them get a doctor's note, making it necessary for him to be off of campus. Now, in my head, you want everybody to be safe and socially distant. Then why are you giving them such a hard time? It comes down to money. Oh, of course. That's all it is. They want the ten, twelve thousand dollars for you to live in that dorm room. And I and I also think like so you know, even like school's a great example as, you know, everybody's doing online classes. Now grade school is tough enough for the kids. High school, again, is tough. Even in college, right? The the price of college or tuition has not dropped because now you're doing everything from home on your computer virtually. So my my thought process is a lot of college is going out, is being on campus, is getting in-person learning, is being in the environment, is talking to people, is socializing. You know, the campus and the living life is a huge part of why people go to college. It's not just the schooling. Yep. So now you transition everybody virtual, but your prices didn't drop. It's not, oh, it was $20,000 a semester, but since you're only doing online, it's only 10000 10, like it's still no. the same price, and you're getting not even half of the you were yep. you were getting when you're actually physically on the campus. I know what happened with Hillary was that she, you know, is all remote, but she's a bio major. So some of these lab activities, all of a sudden she gets an email. Oh, by the way, you have to pay fifty dollars for this app to do your homework. And I went, what? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't they be covering that? They should. She, the only money she got back was for her housing. She did get that back. But my other friend, they're fighting on that. Now, he he's staying home. Right. You know, they're going to fight that battle or whatever. But, you know, it's ridiculous to me that, okay, you want everybody safe. You want everyone socially distant. Because what would happen is you. he was saying that you would have to fill out paperwork. Let's say you wanted to go to get groceries mm -hmm. or something off of campus to even leave your dorm room. You had to fill out paperwork at least 24 hours in advance and longer time was required for um, different things. 
So you had to fill. It was like, what am I in Nazi Germany again? Yeah, exactly. I mean, oh my God, you can't leave your room. No. What? No. And, and the last thing I'll say about this is, you know, again, this is why I ask people just to, to think freely and think for yourself and kind of question everything. And whether you believe it or not, I kind of think it puts you in, in, in the best spot you could be in. Is if people, if the, the government, the politicians, and the whatever was, was truly, really worried about your health, why do they not stop you from going to McDonald's eight times a day? Why do they not stop you from doing drugs? Shut it all down. Right. Like, like that's what you have to think. Like, if you eat fast food and eat terrible, 10 times a day, nobody stops you. If you go do drugs, nobody stops you unless the cops catch you. But there's so many bad things you can do to yourself that you can drink alcohol and get cirrhosis of the liver. That's, that's okay because that's your choice. But when it comes to you know a vaccine or COVID, we have to protect you. And that's, regardless, again, of how you think, that kind of gets my wheels turning. Like, I don't get it. Like, I can go do drugs, eat 15 Big Macs, and then drink... Uh, un- until I fall, a little excessive. Until I fall down, right? Ten, eight Big Macs would be fine. That would be that would be a little excessive, but that's okay. You're not worried about me then. Nope. But when it comes to COVID and, and the mask, and oh vaccine, no, we got to protect you. Now you're protecting me. Yeah, protect you. Gotta but what, protect but you. what about all the bad stuff I did before COVID? I don't really care. Oh. I just got to protect you now. <laughs> it's COVID. I got to. Thank protect you. you. I really appreciate you coming around like this and and making a big difference in my life. Uh, you know, I'm trying my best. Uh, anything I could do, it's my pleasure <laughs> to help. Call me Chick Fil A, whatever I, you want. I, I never, I never knew, like you personally and random people were so worried about me. Everything. Uh, bow down to <laughs> Phil. Bow down. Thank you. Bow down. Thank you. I'll be here all day. Will you? Thank you. No, actually, for another about thirty-five minutes. But you, you have to go get another Big Mac. That's true. I only had seven today. Only well, seven. So, do you share any? No, not the Big Mac. Oof. Never, never share a Big Mac. Fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually skinny, which. <laughs> It makes me wonder what you do. You starve. You starve. No. <laughs> so so what do you go like a week without eating and then go a week where you eat seven Big Macs a day? Let me tell you this, right? If, if you're trying to lose weight and you don't like the, the gym and the workout routine, go deliver packages for Amazon. You will move so much. They just got a free plug on our show. Right. And they don't. The they, hell. And Amazon does not need a free plug. No, they, they don't. don't. They don't need it. They don't need anything. But I'm telling you, it, if you want to lose weight, delivering packages, yeah. That's where it's at. You can visit Phil. Maybe you can be his assistant. Have a nice ride around town with him all day. I definitely need an assistant. That is true. You need a, now. Is so, the assistant going to drive? So I'll give you a little like off topic here. So if you do drive for for Amazon, you obviously you drive the big truck, Dodge thirty five hundred Ram. Yum. And uh, so on a normal day, you're doing anywhere from one hundred and eighty to two hundred stops. That's a lot. And about three hundred packages. Right, because some houses are getting like five and six packages. Right, but also, I'd rather the houses get more packages because it's really time-consuming and annoying when somebody will buy like, I don't know, a pack of stickers, and you got to like do all this driving just to drop off their their stickers. But Mommy, my stickers are here. Mm-hmm, that's how we do. So no vaccine for me, COVID-19, no vaccine for you. Absolutely not. Not happening. Good man. All right, so let's transition to a much more joyful topic. Joyful? Which is... That's not joyful. That sounds I like mean, that's like that's joyful naughty maybe. Hey, <laughs> you do you. Uh huh. What um? How many listens do we have on the podcast? You were talking about your favorite number earlier. Oh yeah, we got sixty nine. <laughs> that's why I was playing that. That was. That's a good segue. Are we going we got, into like some sexual topic or something? Or I mean, it sounds like we have the the. <laughs> The music, we got the, the DJ horn in the back. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Phil's doing a little dance in the studio. Always do, babe. Yeah, I don't know if you really want him to do that, though. Uh-huh. Gets the people, gets the people going. Hey. But, uh, okay. Wait till we hook up webcams and put this all on, you know, full blast. It's going to be wild. Yeah. It'll we're, be wild We're going to have time. strippers, everything. Yeah. There's nowhere to go from here. <laughs> That's it. It's over. Crap. Cancel this damn episode. Nah, nah. So, so Christmas time. What, what are we doing? Are we buying presents? Do you? Uh, do, are you doing more of a Christmas Eve deal? Do you do more of a Christmas Day? Tell me. Tell me what's up. Well, this year, who knows what the hell is going to happen? I mean, it's it's kind of all up in the air. Okay. Um, 
normally, you know, just hang with the family, open the presents on Christmas Day. Now with the girl, is this another Thanksgiving where we decide like, okay, honey, well, we'll go to your house for 15 minutes. We won't eat much. And then we'll save dessert for my house. And then we'll open one present here and then one present in the car. And then when we go here, we'll do this. And then we should be fine, even though we got to make 15 trips back and forth. Well, I mean, we haven't really discussed it yet, but I'm uh-uh. glad you're breaking this up because now I know when I get home. It's December 15th. You only have 10 days. You know what? Today's the day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Today's the day. Yeah, it's probably going to end up being the day we have to. Well, because I know that her friends do something too. Um, they have some Christmas traditions that they all get together and do. So now I got to factor that in too. Okay. I mean, I'm okay with just being a lazy bum and not doing anything. Right. I'm, I'm okay with that. Because you're racking your brain with not only as a family, now we're, inter- now we're injecting friends into the mess. You're not injecting me with <laughs> So that's a good segue back to the COVID-19 <laughs> vaccine. Wow. But, so then we have friends, we have families, we have the animals. Now, now let me ask you this. You obviously you're buying presents for your girl. Yeah. Now, have you gone as far yet to buy presents for her family? Yes. Oh, sh- yeah. <laughs> see, see. Oh, it's, it's serious, people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing it. Until I know. You just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a new toy. I get it. You just can't stop touching it. No comment. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So juvenile. So juvenile. Hey, you gotta have. A, someone's got to do it. <laughs> so, so they they did get presents. The her family. I'm not going to reveal what they are because they actually listen to the show. Okay, good. Um, so the parents are always the first on board to a new adventure. Like, like it's true. Whoever your son or daughter is, like they could really suck. And no matter... You and, really suck. <laughs> yeah. Inside joke. You'll get it next week. Yeah, you, you could really suck. And no matter what you do, and they'll be like, oh, honey, I think you're, real, you're really good. Until somebody from the outside tells you, like, now nah, you, you really do suck. Uh, you know, they call me butter because I'm on a roll. Mm-hmm. Not just because of my fat rolls. <laughs> but... Fat lives matter. So, <laughs> yeah, they, they really do. So... It's what we call the show episode. Right. So you got them gifts. Yes. Now, do you think they're going to reciprocate with a gift for you? Yeah, they are. I already know it, it's bad. They can't keep a secret. At least the girls can't. The girls cannot keep a secret for okay. their life. So so how many people? So you had to buy your parents. Yes. So your family, their family. Yes. I'm broke. Right. I was, I was, that, was my, that was my next lead up. Yeah. I'm broke. I work at Target People. My Vemo's at JJ Golick. Anyone wants to help me out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it's bad. I mean, you never know until you ask. Hey, I mean, listen. You have zero now, so if somebody gives you a dollar, you got a dollar. Yeah, you got Listen, actually, I don't have zero, but it, it's it's still, it's, it's depressing. Right, because you have to buy. Now, that's the, so, you know, my thing is when you give, because I, I hear this a lot from people, they'll give, but they'll ask, like, how much did you spend on me or how many presents did you get? Because then, see, if you give with with the thought that you'll get something in return, you're not really giving. Right. So I yelled at her. I said, "You better not buy anything." Right. And you know, like as long as long, and you're the only one who truly knows if that's the way you are. Because some people be like, "Don't buy me anything." I'm like, man, this better be get me something that's like at least a hundred bucks. Phil, don't <laughs> reveal your true colors. So no, I'm not. I'm brutally honest. <laughs> but yeah, like if you want to give and you give just because you want to, or you want to buy something for somebody, that's fine. But you know, again, if you're giving with the notion that oh, I spent 150, and then you get something for 25 bucks, and you're like, man, this this cheap piece of shit. Wow. Wow. He's really, you know, Phil calls it like it is. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's a good thing. Other times. No, it's, oh, it's, always a, it's always a good thing. Well, it's a some good pe- thing, but some people can't take it. Right. Correct. Some people can't take it, and that's when he's going to get slapped. Right. Yeah. I mean. That and one. please, please make sure that you get video if you're going to slap him. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, I'm sure his fiance and I would both like to watch. <laughs> See, because the thing is, there are some people, like you said, that when you tell them the truth, they know it's true. Like, people will argue with you even though they know it's true. And then, like, so say we're doing the show now on the air, you might not say, and then later be like, yeah, Phil, you're, you're right. I, I understand what you're saying. Oh, yeah. I know what you're saying. You know what I mean? Totally. hmm Yeah, I know. So so let's talk the food. You're actually going to get the vaccine. No, I would never get the vaccine. I don't know. I, I would, see that look. I would never get the vaccine. I see that look. He, that, he's thinking about it, guys. No, he's no, 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 I, no I thought not. about it. No, I'm not getting it. So, <laughs> so food-wise... What, what do we do? 
there's been talks about prime rib actually on both sides, which is funny. Um, mm. I know her side's leaning more toward that. And I believe my mom has finally decided to make stuffed shells homemade. Oh, interesting. So that, I mean, that's going to be a pretty good eating day. It's going to be Thanksgiving all over again. My fat is going to eat all day. <laughs> now, now do you have to like, uh, is it like an athlete where you like warm up like a couple of days before you kind of just eating a little bit more, kind of get yourself ready? Or is it normal, eat, eat, normal eat, and then like Christmas Day, it's like just the bonanza, like you just don't stop. Yeah, that, that's usually how it goes. <laughs> it, it's so really it's funny, ha- there's, there's yeah. no theory to it at all. It's just, yeah, I just, I, just I eat everything eat. in sight. I, I just got to eat. You got to eat. Now then do you, you got to have dessert. Do you get full quick? Because I feel like... I do. I, I get full pretty quick. I didn't used to. So my body has changed many times. So I was fat. Then I was skinny. Mm-hmm. Like middle school, I was skinny. Then I gained all the weight back. But So I used to be able to eat so much more. But the transition back from skinny to fat, for whatever reason, I cannot eat as much as I used to. So do you, do you eat like more times per day? Just not a yeah. lot? At, at like, yeah. Okay. That's typically what will happen. That's horrible. Yeah, so I would think that it's probably what you're eating in those in, in between those times. Like, you know, if you were like eating like, oh, I have a man. Oh, I really went crazy with apples and peanut butter. Oh, I had peanuts. Now I had some fruit snacks. Now listen, fruit snacks are a go-to. They are. I, mean, I actually listen. have a bag right in front of me, and fruit snacks are made with real fruit. They're an excellent <laughs> source of vitamin A, C, and E, no preservatives, and they're also gluten-free. So Gluten-free? Yeah, they're fat-free, too. Those are actually the ones I eat, so yeah, listen, that's, that's just, good to know. Just keep... Well, I always look at it like this. If you're eating, so say you have an option here and it's, um, you know, greasy chicken fingers and there's like five of them or no, fruit you're, snacks. You're, call, uh, you're, I, you're calling my name though. Yeah. Like, well, you, so you really, we learned today that you have zero willpower. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Chicken fingers, I'll take them. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It depends on, depends on where they're from. That's true. But I'm very picky. Like I, I'm very picky with the food. Okay. Yeah. Now, now this episode is obviously all over the place. Now we'll trans- anything goes. Yeah, it is true. So now we'll transition to now. I think a couple episodes you told me that you were working on uh, fitness. Is, is that still going, or is you have you fallen off? It so it's kind it's there, but it's also that crazy time of year. It's on like on the third burner. <sighs> Why you gotta say the third? <laughs> Like, because it's the back burner, but the way you kind of described it, it kind of felt like it was a little bit further behind. So it's. It's a want to get into it, but the problem is so every you, time I go... So you haven't committed to it yet? Not full, no, because I, my mind keeps telling me that we well, are going to eat like on Christmas. The weird thing is you're telling yourself that. Yeah, I know. Right? I'm not following our <laughs> advice at all. Right, it's like... I need to. You're like, somebody's telling me I'm going to eat a lot on Christmas, and like, who is it? It's like, what? It's, it's you. Yeah, like because you're... I already know what's going to be at the table, and I'm... I'm kind of like craving it already. It's like, hey, I want something. You could you could already taste it. But here's the thing, right? You could still eat like a pig on Christmas Day, but it's 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 it, like the the nine days leading up to thing. You don't have to. No, you're right. Well, I mean, like that, I ain't go I ain't going run a mile now. That could, well, yeah. But so here's the thing, JJ. You have to like it has to be done in like little spurts. So I'm not saying tomorrow you're outside running like four miles and you're and you're drinking like kale like smoothies. Oof. But who does that? Right. Yeah, I don't know. Not me, but oof. You know what I mean? Like it kind of has to be like a slow build up. So let like are you you you're a soda drinker? I see a Mountain Dew. <laughs> I see. A wow. Mountain. He yo guys, he's calling me out today. <laughs> I see I see a Mountain Dew, it, and he's he's now he's now drinking the Mountain Dew. <laughs> you would think that would make him want to throw it away. Instead, he's he's sipping it. Can you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, He's making me feel guilty about this Mountain Dew here, but I just want to tell you that it's 170 calories for one can. Yeah, and that's and that's not even the sugar. And only God knows what else is in it. No, listen, yeah. I, I like. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you while you're having your Mountain Dew, but I mean, listen, I, I can I can enjoy a nice soda, but I'm just I, I'm just thinking out loud here. Say you drank, I don't know, how many sodas do you think you drink a day? Depends on the day. Depends on what I'm doing. So just give me like a roundabout. Eight. Nine. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you you really drink eight? I can, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> so he, this is this is actually good. Listen, America, America <laughs> runs on Duncan. 
JJ runs on caffeine. <laughs> so now you know you can get caffeine from like coffee. Surprisingly, coffee doesn't do anything. Nothing for me. Really? It's weird. Like I don't know if there's different types of caffeine or something, but like it doesn't do it. So just a cup of coffee doesn't help you? A cup of coffee will not do it. And how big of a cup of coffee do you drink? Well, I'll drink a big one and it won't do anything. Really? Yeah, I'll drink, yeah. The only coffee that ever came close was when I was working overnight at a diner, they had the Lacas coffee. It was the only one that came remotely close, but still, nothing. Yeah. So here's the thing, when, when you get, when you want to get more serious, like after Christmas, because it's time of year, it, is, it sucks to try and, you know, lose weight. It's like the worst time to do it. So let's just say, for example, you are drinking eight cans of soda a day, which is... It might be more. Outrageous. It, <laughs> like, it's outrageous. It's outrageous, but there may be more, too. That's even worse. But let's just... I, I could easily drink a 12-pack a day. Oh, my God. So, I can't. Hey. I, so, let's say... Let's, let's I'm going to challenge you. To what? Drink eight. I'm not. No, I'm not drinking. I'm not. I don't. I don't even like soda. The only soda I really like is ginger ale, and that's every once in a while. Weirdo. Yeah, like I'm not. Like I'm not. I'm not like chucking Pepsi's and Mountain Dews and like. You don't really drink alcohol either, do you? No, not really. See, see, that's. So now you're still young, so you can get away with it, but not really. I can't get away. Are you looking at this? (laughs) So, so let's see. If you were drinking eight, I, what I would say was like, say you you made like a, a pack to yourself and you're like, I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to work out. I'm not going to stop eating what I eat. But instead of drinking eight to 12 cans of soda a day, you drank two. I feel like you would automatically make a drastic improvement. You think so? Yeah, because, well, yeah, because now instead of drinking 12 cans of soda and having all those calories and sugar, you're only having two. So how could it not, how could it not help you? Probably because I eat like shit too. Right, I know, but what I'm saying is you're doing a little bit at the time. Because my thing is, I don't think you got to be a certain kind of person for it to be cold. You go cold turkey and like you're oh, like, no. oh, I'm not drinking soda. Oh, I'll be miserable. Right, I tried. Or even again, like if you're drinking twelve, like how about you just drink six? You know, like you got you got to start somewhere. Like the, two more, the two n- more will be at eight. The number's so high that like you have room to go like half, and it's still make a dramatic increase. And then we're like, oh, then from six, then we'll wean you down to like four. And then from four to two, and then maybe you can get it to like one a day. You're really like like yeah. at, at your most vulnerable moment, you drink one, one, or maybe you drink it slower, and then it'll last you a little bit longer. Yeah, and you know what's funny too is like I'm, I can just imagine you just sitting there, just just yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm particular with it too. Um, where like I prefer cans over bottles. I get that. Because I feel like... It tastes better in the can. It does. It always does. And I don't like flat soda. Right. Like, if you give me a flat soda or you give me a root beer, I'm probably going to punch you. You don't like root beer? No. You know what? Now, here's the thing. I'm not you a You like root beer. Uh, yeah. I'm, yay. I'm not, I'm not a huge soda person, but I do like a good Pennsylvania... Is it Pennsylvania Dutch? Something like that. Dutch beer? Yes. Oh. Yes. Very good. Now that's that's on a, that's what I'm saying. That for me is a nice special occasion. That's like a nice fifteen. I'm not going to have a beer. I'm going to have a Dutch soda. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's Pinky exactly. up. That's exactly how I order it too. Oh, but what yes. I'm what, I, what I'm trying to tell you is, as I think, and again, listen, your life, you do what the hell you want to do. But I'm thinking eight to twelve sodas a day is just like yeah, is it's, is it's a little much. Yeah, I mean, if we can get people to comment on this or like <laughs> send us like their thought process, like who's really off base. JJ drinking 12 sodas or me calling him out that he drinks 12 sodas that I think that's very excessive. It's very excessive. Uh, I, we already know this, but... Now, like your family and friends, are they in on that? Do they do the same thing or are they like, yo, you should cut back a little bit? No, I'm constantly getting told. And now that I have this foot injury that apparently this can lead to... Okay. You know, drinking all the soda and eating like crap all the time. So since we talked about 19 topics this episode... Your foot, what's what's going on? I have an injury. It's something called like grout or something like that. Grout. It's yeah. It's when I guess you. It's I don't know some, if it's called that. I think it might be called something else. But let me look. Ah, uh, well, I don't know the scientific name, but something like that. Or is it gout? Oh yeah, it's gout. Whatever. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> it, it's. Listen, I got. I mean, I got to do everything on this damn show. You're doing everything gout. except the sound effects. And running the board. Yeah, exactly. If it's if it's well. If it yeah. I mean he's the brains of the operation. I'm the court jester. <laughs> so gout is a common and complex form of arthritis that can affect anyone. 
It's characterized by sudden severe attacks of pain, swelling, redness, and tenderness in the joints. Often yes. the joint at the base of the big toe. Yes. Yes. Mm. And the doctor described it as it can be something as a bed sheet rubbing against it mm -hmm. where it can send you through the roof with pain. Now, I said the symptoms, it can occur uh, like suddenly. Is that what happened to you? Yeah. Actually, I was in the middle of work just doing my thing. And all of a sudden, it, it just started hurting. And your first instinct, I guess, is to limp. Right. Um, because of the way it is, if you look at the foot, your big toe kind of goes up. If you can imagine that, your big toe, like if you're pointing it up, imagine how you have to walk. Right. So, and it hurts so bad. Now, it was um, my girlfriend's father's birthday, and they wanted to go down to the Hard Rock. We were all staying down. Now, anyone that's been to the Hard Rock Casino, I know you've been there. Mm -hmm. The walk from the parking garage to the room, I was almost in tears. It hurt so bad. Right. And I, and they're all looking at me, oh, what'd you do? What'd you do? Can't hurt that bad. Yeah, think again. Yeah. So, you know. It, so did you, did you go see a doctor? Like once Yes. You, okay. So yesterday I went and saw a doctor. Um, he did send me for an x-ray. He said he's 95% sure that's what it was, but we're just going to be sure. Now, I haven't heard anything yet, um, but I've been out of work since Saturday night. Um, so that's the downside of it because you can't really – you don't want to go walking on it any more than you need to until it's healed. And how, and how long did the doctor tell you usually how long it, does it last? He said it does vary. Okay. Um, it can be a day. It can be two days. It can be a week. Because here, it really depends on how severe the attack is and if you got your buddy to flush everything out and stuff like that. Okay. So one of the things they tell you to do is drink cherry juice. And that's supposed to help. So I'm going to attempt that tonight. So this says here, now this takes us right back to, uh, like, listen, now we have to be a little bit more serious about this soda because that's probably where it's coming from. Because according to the Mayo Clinic org, that you know, alcohol, fried food, all of my favorite things. Eating a diet rich in meat and seafood and drinking beverages sweetened with fruit, sugar, fructose, corn syrup, which is definitely in that can of soda. Would you like to read the can? No, you can read it right in front of it. Oh, no. Tell, tell, I, tell me if it's in there. Um, Everything you just said plus some. Uh, you have, so you have diet. You have It's a sperm killer, though. Uh, Obesity is in here. Uh, yeah. if you, a few more, if, yeah. Um, Fat lives matter. This guy. <laughs> so gout occurs more often in men, primarily because women tend to have lower acid levels. So yeah, it's it's a very and um, they said that it can last and it does it does hurt. Now it's getting better, mm -hmm. but it's also you know tell me your opinion on this. Is it worth going back to work where you know you're going to have to run around and you're probably just going to have it flame up again? So, you know, my thing, my suggestion would be not to work if you're not feeling good because it'll probably just prolong the process because at least if you take, say, a week off, you know, 10 days off, you'll feel good and then go back in there. You know, if anything, to me, this would be more like a wake-up call to, uh, I don't want to have this, right? So, like, you know, and, you, and you're, you know, understanding and well aware of the reasons why you probably have this. So, you know, I'm the type of person where if I'm doing something wrong and, I get hurt or there's some sort of side effect to the reason I'm doing it. I'm going to stop doing that shit because I don't want to not be able to walk around. I don't want to be able no. to not go to work and make money because, you know, I'm, I'm doing the, these things that I can control. See, there are some things that you can't control. It is what it is. You just got to accept it. And there are other things like this where you control it. So, yeah. I, mean, I mean, if you like being out of work or out of commission and not being able to move, which doesn't really resonate with me. I'm no, out. Like, it, I, I don't want that because I can control not having it. So that's, they're the things that I would do to, to stop it. No, because most jobs are not like this. Well, that's true, too. I, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you that, you know, this isn't hurting my foot. Right. But if I were to go and actually do my regular job, I wouldn't be able to walk by the end of the day. And the regular job, I feel like uh, from what you told me, at least, you know, off the air, it's it's physical, so it's probably good. It's a good workout. It, it is a decent work, not as good as a workout as you have in Amazon, no. but it, it it is a decent. You are moving. You really don't stop moving. Right. 
Um, so that's a good thing. You're continuously moving, whether it's your legs, it's your arms packing, you're always moving. Now, are you sore, like, after your shift? I mean, like, later at night, you take a shower, you lay in bed. Are you sore? No. Normally, I'm not. Okay. I'm normally, I might be tired. Right. You know, but that's normal to be tired after, you know, eight, ten hours running around like that. Right, of course. But not pain. You know what I mean? Now, if I lifted something heavy that day, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, right, I got you. I'm, I may have had a little bit, but this was completely different. This just flared up. And you, and you never had this before? No. Now I'm aware of it. I right. didn't know of anything like this okay. happening, especially from, you know, I've heard of kidney stones, all that kind of stuff, but I had never heard of this. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard of, of people that have had it. I never really, you know, until just now, like really looked it up or really saw what it was. But yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, I always get, I don't want to say excited, but I, anything that I can, can control that I see that like I have, and I'm like, well, let me just do these steps to try and reverse this because I don't want to have to go through this again if yeah. I if, if you don't have to. You know what I no, mean? I, I don't want to be going through this again. And I think it was the combination because I've always drank soda. I've always drank, but I've been working at the bar. So fried food. All your drinks are usually, you know, half price or some of them are free. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're you're inclined to eat and drink more when you have a discount. And that's what I did. Two weeks in a row just and it finally Well here's the thing, because you know, I know this from personal experience. You know, again, like you're making the decision. Now, I find it hard to believe at the bar they don't have a salad. Oh, we have a salad. Right. But but again, I wasn't aware that this Right. Would come now. I mean, sometimes I'm it, going to, you know, limit it because I can't. If you look at it in a positive way, you know, sometimes you need like a wake up call to kind of be like, damn, like, you know, I got this because I'm making these bad choices. Yep. I don't want to do this. Let me change it. Because again, a lot of times if if you're not being affected by it or nothing's really hurting you, then you're like, I'm good. Like, I'm good. Like, cause I've never had this before. So exactly. Or, oh, you do know about it, but oh, it's not going to happen to me. And then it does. Right. And that's where, you know, the only thing I ever had gotten before, um, you know, after a night of drinking or anything like that would be like a Charlie horse in the back of your oh, leg. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, dehydration or if you don't get enough potassium. Right. Um, And I can usually feel if I'm not getting enough potassium or anything like that, I can usually now feel when so, and I'll go eat a banana, I'll drink some milk, you know. I'll do those things. It's just little. It's just little changes. And the other thing is, depending on who you're with, uh, you know, the people you work with, coworkers, family. You know, a lot of times, you know, they have, you know, they don't have your. Not that they don't have your best interest at heart, but they just do the things they normally do, and they cook what they normally cook, and they buy what they normally buy. And if you're around people that always have that kind of stuff available, and it's yep. easy and access to you, it's really hard to say, you know, I, I've had this problem even with my own family. You know, coming from an Italian family, it's a lot of bread, it's a lot of oils, it's a lot of pasta. And, you know, when you're trying... Man, try I'd love your family. Yeah. <laughs> and, and listen, the food's delicious, and I, and I love to eat it. Uh, but it, it was really hard once I got to that certain point where I was like, no, I can't, I'm, I'm working out, or I'm trying to get to this goal. I'm trying to, you know, look better in my suit. I'm trying to look better in my clothes. I'm trying to feel better about myself. It's really hard especially when it's family and friends because then it's like well you don't like my food anymore like you know you get all these kind of different outside distractions yeah and it's hard and it's somebody else is like you go out and people are eating pizza and wings and you've been doing good for two weeks it takes a lot of uh, like self-awareness it takes a lot of a lot of you know guts to be like no i gotta have this like i'm sticking and it's really hard and then people will also make you feel bad to be like come on bro like you always did that before you, you know who's really good at that too keith Keith Eshelman is very, very good at that. Because I used to do that. We'd go out to Texas Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. oh, I love Texas. He, oh, my God. All their food is great. That bread. Oh, well, stop breaking that <laughs> up. <laughs> Got to get that bread. Now, you know what's funny, though? I'm not a big bread person. Okay, so that's good. So it's good, but I love pasta, and I love rice. Yeah, I mean, rice. So is, you know, I'm a big rice. I'm, I, I'm like a rice monster. Yeah, so, a monster. <laughs> wow. I guess it's better than being a cookie monster. That's um, true. I do like cookies too, though. I, who? Hey, it's that time of year. Who doesn't like cookies? That's true. Um, but no, you, you know, you go to Texas Roadhouse, you know the bread and stuff. Now, when you go to Texas Roadhouse, you, most people are thinking steak, mm -hmm. right? You're, that 
he would get salmon, he would get it's my man chicken, he would get a salad, and I'm like, dude, why the hell are he actually converted me where I learned I really don't like their steak too much. I prefer Outback steak, so when we go to Roadhouse, I will get chicken, and it's, it's the portobello mushroom chicken, mm-hmm. but we both don't get it with the cheese. We we don't want the cheese on it. So Yeah, like, yeah that's the thing. Especially, it's really hard, too, when you go out, because even if it's, it looks like something decent on the menu, it's probably filled with like sauce and different calories, so it's hard when you go out, but again... Yeah. You know, yeah, at Texas Roadhouse, they do have the, the Caesar salad. You can put the salmon on top of it. Salmon's really good for you, and it fills you up. I love that. You can do the chicken Caesar. But he does, like, he will, sometimes he'll cheat, but he'll, he'll also, like, when he gets the rolls, he will only pick off the top part. Yeah. That has, like, the glaze on it. Yeah. That has, you know, the most flavor. He won't eat the center dough because he's like, I don't need all that calorie. I want the flavor, and that's. Right. And depending on, you know, I always kind of, my line of thinking is this like if i'm working like at amazon and it's like a 10 12 hour day and i'm running back and forth to the truck and busting my ass and i know i burn like five to seven thousand calories today i'll go have a roll maybe have a cheeseburger it's fine but if right. it's day where like today i'm off and i'm not really moving like that later it'll just be phil I'll, you want to go chickies and pizza let's go get some fries, fries some right. wings i'll do that tomorrow after i work 14 hours and i'm dying <laughs> and i can't move and then, and then, so then you could treat yourself a little bit. But even Texas Roadhouse, I usually go for the the herb crusted chicken. That is good too. That's yes. really good, and it's really low in in calories. And then yeah. again, if you have that, and you just do corn and even mashed potatoes, it's not that much because you might it might be only five six hundred calories for the whole meal instead or you get of like the salad is your one side, and maybe you get corn or right. I actually really like their corn. Yeah, it's good. They put. Like all this, I think it's a lot of pepper, but I like it. Yeah. No, it's, it's, as I'm saying, it's really good. You, you just got to kind of be creative, uh, you know. And I mean, steak is okay. I mean, steak is steak is not going to. You don't want to eat a lot of red meat. No. And I didn't know that, um, that you, you know, red meat is actually not that good for you. Right. Um, I like to eat a lot of chicken. And another thing that I tried to do, and it's, it's just, I got to find the time management for it, is I bought a big pack of chicken. Mm-hmm. And I had planned on, I like the mixed vegetables that you can get, you know, you get the frozen mixed vegetables, right? some rice, some chicken, put it together, and then, you know, you just throw it in the microwave. Yeah. But it's finding, for me, it's making the time to do it. Because when I get done work, I'm tired. And you're hungry. And 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 something quick. Right. And I don't want, you know, then you don't want to cook. But then when you finally have a day off, you're kind of like... I don't want to do anything, That's but re- you have to push yourself to do it, but usually it doesn't happen. That's really the biggest thing is the is the time. It's like anything else. You If you don't commit to it like in your head to yourself, it's not going to work because that's what happens no matter who you are. You know, yeah. when you got to work a regular job and you got a lot going on. Like you said, it's, what can we get? Oh, this is open. Let me get this real quick. So when you have that one day off, and this is why it's so hard, and it's definitely not easy, and it's not something that just, it's, it's oh, yeah, it's super simple. Uh, you know, you got to commit to it. And like you said, the chicken and the rice, if you made it yourself and then packed it, would be fantastic. You would feel good. You would eat better. But it's just finding that. And then a lot of times you got to do it for the whole week. So you're going to have to set aside a good, like, two hours to cook it, right. pack it, and get it. You know, it, it's a lot. It's not easy. I, I, you can't sit there and eat it while you're doing it either. Right. <laughs> I just ate Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> when well, I, when... <laughs> but, you know, we're laughing about it, but it's stuff that happens, too. It is. It, it's, but I feel, you know, I went and I bought this stuff two months ago um, that I, you know, I'm going to do it. And w- now I look, I go, where the hell did the time go? Right. And that's what I was saying earlier. You got to start small and kind of build up. So instead of saying, okay, this week I'm not doing anything. I'm having seven days. I'm, I'm doing my own meal. You'll probably get overwhelmed. So that's why I always think, all right, there's seven days. Let me do monday and wednesday i want to try this and then the rest of the days just eat like you're normally eating and then you kind of interject a little bit of the time and then maybe a month later it's all right let me do when uh, monday wednesday friday because that way you start right. to build up because if you go like hog wild and it's like oh seven days i'm not gonna eat shit. i'm gonna i'm gonna eat broccoli i'm gonna it's too much and it's it's such a drastic change that you can't get used to it it's got to be like oh monday's that day i have that but then tomorrow i can go back to to eat the stuff i like or and you, you know, know what's funny too is I really don't like fast food. Chick Fil A, okay. PDQ. I don't really consider fast. They're fast food, but I like they're PDQ. Th- they're more of a quality fast food, if you will. It's right. it's not like you're going to McDonald's or Wendy's or Burger King, 
and it's been sitting out for three hours, and you know what I mean? Even though last night, I will say, in the truck, I, I did... Uh, well, Amy Amy met me like halfway while I was delivering my last couple uh, stops. So this is her fault. Yeah, but I definitely, we definitely, we we uh, we worked together on it. Okay, we worked together. All right, all right. We worked together. I'll give it to and you. And it was more, oh, you're feeling Burger King. I said, yeah, you're right. I'm feeling a Whopper. <laughs> no, but you don't eat like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I didn't have I didn't have fries. I didn't right. have uh, you know I didn't have chicken fries. I didn't have you know a brownie. I didn't have. You know, that's what I had. And all day I'm running around. And the only thing I had was like maybe like two um, Nutri-Grain bars. Right. I had like a protein bar. I had some Cheerios. And then I had the Whopper. And that's after burning like 7,000 calories. So right. I'm probably still at a, a negative caloric intake even even eating the Whopper. Well, see, and I don't really um, like it. it. I feel sick after. Okay. So I, I can eat, you know, if I eat a burger from any of the places... I feel sick after. Okay. It might taste good going down. You know, it might be decent going down, like but then fast I... Fast food you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. And, and then I feel like, crap, I would rather um, go to a diner or go, you know what I mean? Or to like a mom and pop shop, a pizza shop. Right. Um, because I just feel the fast food, I feel sick. And um, Where if I go, if I go to the diner, even if I'm getting a burger from the diner, you know what I mean? I feel better. I don't know if it's something that the fast food does... Maybe. Or how it's made, but my body, you know, when you're younger, like a little kid or whatever, you you can eat pretty much anything and it doesn't right. affect you. Well, if you if you haven't noticed too, like you know, even when little kids, like yeah, they'll have a happy meal, but little kids don't stop running around. True. So they don't. You know, that's the thing. I mean, they're outside. They're running in the house. They're running. You know, and that's why. So they're they're burning off all that stuff so quick. And you know, if you can do that, usually again, as an adult, it's harder because you got to work and depending on the job you have. But I would even say, even for like you and Hillary, like if you guys go out with me and Amy, what we always do is say we want boneless wings, right? We'll go to a bar, right. we'll go to Applebee's, whatever we want. Instead of getting uh, each one of us get boneless wings, we'll do okay. Let's do a let's do a Caesar salad each, and then we'll do an order of boneless wings, and then we'll split them. So instead of having ten each, we'll have a salad right. and then five each. So these little things have really helped me, which is a couple days try to eat clean on days where you're really like working out or you're really moving a lot maybe treat yourself on the days where you're just lazy you get a sat like you know what i mean you kind of got to piecemeal it together where it's not like one size fits all but depending like if i play sports if i'm playing baseball on sunday and i'm running around and i'm sweating and i'm really working out later i'll treat myself right you, you might have a beer and some wings with the guys or, right you know something like that yeah so so it's you know depending on how active you are that day or you know, you can that way. Even the boneless wings, if you're splitting, at least you still get to taste them. But you're not, you know, overeating five or even wings. And don't go and order more. Right. Yeah. See, my my problem was, and especially the past two weeks was, you know, it's it's a new place. You want to try everything, but don't go try it all at once, either. You well, know what I mean? Like, and that was my thing. Like, I should not have the wings at the place that I'm DJing are phenomenal. Right. So, you know, I'm like, oh, I got to have more. And then you're DJing three nights in a row in the same place. And next thing you know, you've had a plate or two of wings three nights in a row for two weeks straight. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Let me answer this. Because this is when I eat. So say I'm, I'm DJing or I'm doing an MC event and I'm, you know, I'm dressed nice and I'm not wearing like a, like just a t-shirt and jeans or a hoodie or something comfortable. If I'm in like a suit where I got my belt on and everything's kind of like I'm all suited up. I feel like if I eat even at a wedding, like when I'm at a wedding, I really don't eat. I might have like a little bite, but if right. I if I eat like if I eat like 15 wings and fries, I feel like physically I feel like I'm I'm, I'm like fatter. Like I feel uncomfortable eating right. like fast food and greasy food if I'm dressed up or if I'm you know what I mean like that kind of thing. Or even even like on a normal day, if I eat bad for like after I feel fat, I, right? I, I don't I don't feel comfortable. But if I know I eat clean. And I work out, I feel good. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. Like, if you eat bad food, do you feel worse after? Or do you, do you feel, like, heavier? Or does it really not bother you? I, I really think it depends on where I am, mm -hmm. when it is, um, and what I'm doing. So if it's fast food, I try to avoid it before a gig at all costs. Sometimes you don't really, hate to say it, have a choice, depending on if there's things that are out of your control. You know, if you're going from one gig to another and something 
you know, something happened. Sometimes it's beyond your control. There are some times in those instances where you know you're not going to get to eat. You stop at Wawa. You stop somewhere. Right. Um, you know, I try to stay away from it because I do almost every single time. Unless I'm just getting like a drink from a fast food place, I feel sick. So I try to stay away from it. When I'm at the bar, the bar I'm DJing kind of feels like I'm at home. So it's a little different for me. So you feel comfortable because I know it, it's weird for me. Like I feel, I, I don't know if it's guilt maybe. Like if I eat, like say I just eat like a pig and I'm like, I'm really hungry. And then like later I'll regret it. And I'm like, I really didn't want all that. And now I kind of feel. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I feel like guilt. I feel like fatter. I feel like, ah, oh, damn it. I was like rolling. Now, if I was at, if this was a new bar that I didn't know or I was not as comfortable as I am. You know, like I, I normally I'm in dress pants and a polo at minimum. Right. But over there, it's a lot more. Even the staff are jeans and a dress shirt. Okay. You know, it, it's more of that relaxed. It, it's business casual vibe. Right. So uh, for the I had a first. Now, of course, my foot was already injured earlier in the day. Um, and I still went and to DJ. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you saw the facade that we have. For the first time ever, I've never been able to do this, but, and if it was anywhere else, I don't think I could have, but I sat on a bar stool while I was DJing. Oh my God. Now, now nobody knew. Right. Because you couldn't tell, I'm tall. Right. So you couldn't tell that I was sitting, but for the first time ever, I was able to do it. I've never, I'm always, I stand, I don't go anywhere. Even if I got to go to the bathroom, like I got to hope I have somebody that knows how to you know, run the equipment because I don't auto mix. I don't do any of that. Right. I don't run it on autopilot because I've seen too many horror stories. So normally I'm there, I'm standing the whole time, four or five, six, seven, eight hours, whatever it is. That's where I am. But I was so relaxed. So I ordered more. I drank more. You know, I was comfortable. I was at home. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that's something it's really, I mean, technically it's not good. Right, because you're comfortable, no, and, they, and then you make you know you make bad choices, and you know no, I, I drank like a fish that night, and no, no one would ever knew it, um, you know, because you don't get out of control and you know how to handle. But you know, I drank like a fish that night, and the next morning I was like, "Whoa!" Well, and alcohol too. What like, happened? Alcohol combined with the fried food is uh, is not good. Like that's what the doctor said. You said you drank like a fish. I said, "Yeah." Well, that would be why you're in pain right thanks right. doc and that's the thing to me like alcohol fried food bad choices is not you know and, and you know like i say you're still younger and i like say uh, people that drink a lot like a lot of alcohol you know you'll start to see it on their face in their late 30s in their 40s oh yeah i uh, you know it wears if on they you. make it that long yeah it, it really does it does wear on you but i would try to implement those you know if you're really trying especially after christmas Try to implement those little bit of changes. And, you know, see, because, you know, if you get a little bit of result, if you lose some pounds, you like the way these clothes fit better, that's really all the motivation, at least, that I needed to, to keep moving. I was like, man, like, that's starting to look good. Or, you know, I, I can, like, and you could feel it, too. Like, I know even working for Amazon, like, it's only been a couple of weeks, but I feel stronger. I feel, yeah. my legs are like, like an absolute, like, rock. I guess it's a good thing because you don't really have a choice. I know you right. push yourself as it is, but you know, for someone like me, you don't really have a choice. No, it's do it because you know you're getting paid to do it. You're getting paid, and you're you're basically you are on a timer or two to yeah. where it's you need to get this shit done. So you know, and, I, and I'll be honest, the first, regardless of how much you work out, your body has to adjust to anything. So the first couple of days, I was like, my God, am I working out? And then you know, you as, question if you're in sh- now, you're in shape. You know, you look in shape, but you were probably even your body going. Am I in shape? I was sore. Like, I would go home and lay down and get up the next morning. And I'm like, my God. Like, I, you know, it, again. <laughs> I feel like I'm, you know, 50 years old or something. Yeah, like, you can lift weights. You can, It's like even when you play sports. Like, I can work out all off season, And then I get in the spring, summer. And then, you know, even my dad will always say, like, you're not in baseball shape. Like, you know, when you're working out, you don't swing a baseball bat. So then when you swing a baseball bat, you use your shoulder blades or you use parts of your body you didn't even know exist. Same thing with, you know, delivering. You're jumping in and out of the truck. You're you're running. You're you're lifting. You're so you know everything else about it sucks, except for the fact that it's really a good workout. So that's yeah. that's kind of what I tell myself. I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, this is a, this is a terrible job as far as like you got to deal with the elements and the rain and the, 
All this, yeah, all, have fun on Wednesday. Yeah. Well, I had fun uh, yesterday. It was pouring rain. Yeah. Today, I'm not working, so of course it's nice. Wednesday. Tomorrow's th- going to suck. Right. So. Depending on what your route is, yeah. it's going to suck. It's kind of like if you ever watched that Rocky Four versus uh, Drago the Russian. Yeah. When he's outside training in the snow. That's basically what I feel like. You, do you ever hear the Bill Cosby special where the parents are always... You know, I had to walk to school uphill yeah. both ways yeah. in five feet of snow. <laughs> That'll be me tomorrow. Uh, Phil's going to call me tomorrow, and I'm going to record it. Right. And <laughs> I'm delivering this package and uphill <laughs> both ways. It really is. This it, is for anything goes. It's, it's actually almost like 100% accurate. It's, it's, it, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's funny, but it's, it's really true. I had a guy yesterday, pouring rain, where I had to go up the hill. And he's like, hey, man, how are you? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm f- great. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Like, you, you, don't, you don't see it's pouring rain? You don't see that I just stepped in, like, three feet of mud coming up to your house? And now my feet are soaked? And yeah. I, I got to go do 165 more deliveries? But other than that, man, I'm great. How are you? <laughs> and he's like, oh. And then, and then I mean, I kind of feel bad a little bit because I guess I was a little sarcastic. But it wasn't really the time to be like, hey, man, how are you? Right. Like, do do I look happy right now? Do I? Yeah. Do Do you see the smile through my mask? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, the masks that say, "Trust me, I'm smiling." No, <laughs> I, I'm actually cursing you out. That's the only uh, good thing that I saw about these masks, by the way, was when someone would say something so stupid, like in that instance, and I could hide my facial expression for the most part. Right. Or like you go to the the convenience store around here in Jersey, Wawa, and it always says they have that little sticker on the. The glass that says there's a smile behind this mask. Uh, or I'm cursing you out. You know they ain't smiling. For, for the most part. There are some that are, you know, upbeat and jittery. And some I'm like, nice. what the hell did they put in your coffee? You know why? Because they, they have a different perspective on life. Like me, I get pumped up to go to work on Monday. Everybody else is like, oh, it's Monday. And then they're like, oh, it's Wednesday hum day. And they're like, thank God it's Friday. And I'm just like, your life sucks. Yeah. Right? You know what, though? I, I was... I was happy for Friday, but only because you it was time it. for the fun job. Right, right. I get you know that. what I mean? You got to take that hat off and put the fun hat on. You, no, know, you got that. to put that party hat with two beer cans. and. But, it, because that, but again, because people that are, are happy about hum day and happy that it's Friday, it's, it's like a way to kind of get through your job that you really don't want to do. Well, you want to you want to be happy. A, Don't start you start a be happy? podcast. Yeah, exactly. yeah I, I want to be happy. Yeah, can right. you tell, tell what's the secret to happiness? And the secret to happiness, I think, listening to our podcast. That's one of that's one of the that's one of the secrets. Right, and you have to do all of the secrets or combined, or it doesn't work. So don't think skipping out on this is going to work. Right, you got to listen to the, the Anything Goes podcast. Good. You got to love what you do. Got it. And you got to be happy to be alive. Got it. That's it. That's it. That's your three secrets to success and being happy. And push yourself. And that and that works too. Okay. So that's like that. that's like yeah, we can we can get into a much bigger list. Like I can have thirty things, but so they're your three tops. Are you on Santa's good list? Oh, of course. Are you? Mm-hmm. You sure? I'm a good boy. Are you? I am. Sure. I mean, listen, I'm I'm a good boy. There are times when I, you know, I'm saying like, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you, you. yeah, yeah. You know, those are times but, we can't talk about on the air. Correct. That's a that's a different that, that's, that's a, a that's different a, that's type a different of, naughty list. That, that's it. Okay. Um, Let's end this. Okay. Let's do it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Phil Rossi. That is JJ Golick. This, of course, that is me. Anything goes. JJ, give him the socials. At anything goes. PJ, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that great stuff. Google Podcasts, Spotify. Yeah. All right. Peace. This is Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and J.J. Golick.